when I started my career in physical therapy, I, I looked at a lot of things and, and uh, saw some stuff that I really liked and saw some stuff that I really didn't agree with. One thing that I grabbed onto early uh, was a guy who preached uh, the kinetic chain and uh, the um, chain reaction forces that happen within the body, which I thought was fantastic because he's talking about the body as a system rather than individual joints by themselves. So I really started to uh, gravitate to that kinetic chain uh, thought process. After using that thought process for a while, I, I discovered there were some flaws because in order to believe in the kinetic chain, you have to believe that A affects B, B affects C, C affects D, but A doesn't directly affect D. Which, if you have a snake, for an example, they have a chain reaction. That would work for them. But as I'm working with patients and I'm looking at athletes, that chain reaction really doesn't, really doesn't work functionally. So I started to think to myself, well, there's got to be something different. There, it's, it's going the right way, but it's not quite there. So I thought of, well, if you look at a spider web, a spider web is multidimensional. Uh, when a fly hits this, the web on one side, it vibrates all the way to the other side so the spider senses that there's something caught in the web. So I thought, well, that's what it's got to be. It's not a kinetic chain, it's a kinetic web. Because all those things, A can actually affect D. So I used that for a while. And then I started, started to think, well, that's not really what we're talking about when we're talking about human function and biomechanics either. Because it's not three-dimensional. It's not a planar. It's not a kinetic matrix, which is what I finally figured out would be the most correct term for it. So when I talk about the kinetic matrix, I'm talking about the fact that if I've got somebody come in with a headache, I better know what's going on with their feet. If I've got somebody come in with shin splints, I better know what's going on with their pelvis. Everything links to everything else in a dynamic A-planar pattern, which is the kinetic matrix. So it's very, very, very vital to take the time to look at somebody's entire kinetic matrix when you're either trying to help them stay better or stay healthy or you're trying to help them recover from an injury. Because the human body is so complex that they may be doing something somewhere out of where their pain is, somewhere out of where their diagnosis is. If you miss that, you may get them better for a certain amount of time, but their compensations are still going to remain because you didn't get to the, that final piece of the kinetic matrix where the flaw was. So when we look at people, we need to look at them as a kinetic matrix and understand all of the inner workings of what's going on in order to help them get back to normal functional biomechanics. And that's what our goal is, to restore no normal functional biomechanics by looking at the kinetic matrix rather than jumping on a symptom like low back pain and saying, well, if they have low back pain, they must have a low back problem. They may have a low back problem, but what's going, out, what's going on outside of that lumbar spine? What's going on throughout the rest of the kinetic matrix? What are we doing with their kinetic matrix that may be causing those faulty patterns? What happens when we put somebody in an orthotic? Does that affect the kinetic matrix only positively, or can that be a negative effect? What happens when we brace somebody? Positive or negative effect on the kinetic matrix? What happens when we stretch somebody? What's, hap what's happening when we give somebody corrective exercises? What what influence do those things have on the kinetic matrix?